Right over to uh, Prince of Wales Island to Fireweed Lodge. Uh, you have two choices when you come into Ketchikan. Uh, once you land on the island uh, airport and then take the small ferry across to the uh, main part of Ketchikan, you either have to jump on the inner island ferry or you have to take a float plane ride. And so we've chosen to uh, take the scenic route and uh, do the ferry this time. It's about a three hour ferry ride. Uh, the seas are pretty calm today, just a couple foot uh, swells, really no, uh, no wind much to speak of. Expecting a great week of fishing. Uh, they've been really hot on the kings. The silvers are starting to move into the bays and uh, also the halibut and the rockfish lean cod will just be fantastic. So looking for a great opportunity with Fire Week Lodge on Prince of Wales Island. We're down at the dock our first morning. Uh, our uh, captain Steve has uh, got the boat ready for us and uh, going to get loaded on to go out for our uh, first day uh, off of Prince of Wales Island with Fireweed Lodge. Go on and join us. Well, we've got the motors on behind us here, but uh, Steve's getting our uh, bait ready for the morning. It looks like we're going to be using this uh, herring. Yeah, correct. I've been letting the herring thaw overnight, uh, so the idea we're just going to cut plug them. Okay. I don't know if you've that, used yes. that technique before, but. Uh, yeah, it's a straight cut plug. We're running about an eight foot liter to a four ounce banana weight. Okay. And essentially what we're doing is leaving the motor in gear or letting the wind push us. And you want to keep about a, you know, roughly a 45 degree angle on your line. Okay. So as you're moving, as you're moving down the drift, you're letting your lines drop, hit bottom, pulling all the way back up. And you're covering all the depths as you're moving down, down the drift. And, you know, if, the more lines you have in the water, the better for this kind of fishing. Sure. You know, it's just more effective. Sure. But, uh, we'll be doing mooching basically for most of your fish. Do you do much trolling at all or is it mostly mooching? Uh, pretty much only mooching during the summer months. Uh, sometimes in early May we'll troll, just more or less because of the weather. It's cold outside. Yeah. But this is, this is a really engaging way to fish. You know, you're actually hooking the fish yourself. And it can be really effective, especially if you're fishing deeper water. You know, say we're fishing 150 feet of water and you see fish at 130 feet. If you've only got two or three lines in the water, you know, like, if I see it on the on the sonar, I can have you guys drop to that exact depth. Right. And hookups are a lot more probable that way for us. best thing to do is just to kind of stop or to reel really slow and let that fish take it. A lot of times you'll feel, feel, um, feel the fish playing with it for a little while and once your rod starts to load up, once you feel the fish take it and start to turn its head, 
let your rod bend just, just a little bit and then reel down and give it a good set. And then one set is all you need and then just keep good pressure on the fish after that. What you got there, Kent? Well, we got the first uh, fish of the morning that uh, it's got some weight to it. It looks like it, we're right about on the bottom though, so it looks like it's probably uh, a halibut. Well, I'm here with uh, Bob and Jeannie uh, Anderson at uh, Fireweed Lodge, the owners here. Uh, boy, what a great uh, facility you have here, Bob. And tell us a little bit about uh, the history of the area and how long you've owned the lodge. Well, Cloac, uh, Cloac where the lodge is, is on the west coast of Prince of Wales Island, um, near Craig, Alaska, which a lot of people have heard of. Uh, the west coast of Prince of Wales Island has historically been the fishing grounds for all the commercial fisheries for the last hundred plus years. So. Um, I came out here in the in the early well 1980 actually working for the state and and uh, loved it out here and decided to stay and, and in 1990 started the lodge and uh, we were one of the first lodges in this area. Back Speaking about the facilities, tell us a little bit about uh, how many people you can handle here, uh, uh, different sizes of groups, and uh, we've got a, a, a great fitness area and a hot tub here also. Right, we we tried to make this a full service uh, facility. The, the, the grounds encompass uh, about two plus acres and, and in, that, in that area we've got 18 rooms, um, six of which are one bedroom suites with the pull outs in the living room that, that allow for couples and, and uh, families and stuff and, and they're in little duplexes. Um, they uh, have connecting doors in between the rooms so it allows for two couples or a family to have the whole thing. All those have their own private decks looking over the water. Those are the newest facilities that we've put on the, on the property about, well, we got 12 other rooms besides that, that have two or three beds in each room, all of which have TVs, telephones, uh, Wi-Fi, and, and uh, showers and tubs and such. We have a rec room facility that has a uh, ping pong table, pool table, a card room, uh, wet bar, big screen TV, um, allows for people to come in and, and have a place to recreate when they come in as well as a workout center which is a full fitness center with all the up-to-date fitness equipment and such. Have a rec room or a rec court which is a full basketball court on each end and then uh, horseshoe pits on each end of that so uh, it allows for a lot of recreation besides that. We also have kayaks and canoes available for our guests. Yeah, and that, I, I just uh, left the uh, hot tub room and looking over the estuary here behind you is just a, a beautiful setting.